kind of round out the organic section of our sculpting, let's talk a little bit more about brush options. Now we've already covered a bunch of them in the masking brush options and some of the sculpting ones are actually very similar. So nothing should be too crazy for you at this point. So say we got the standard stroke here and we're just using our basic standard brush functionality so we can brush out like so. We can hold down Alt and we can brush in. So we can pull out and then hold down Alt to pull in. We can change brushes to like the clay brush and we can use this to build up and then build up and build around if we want to. And then of course Shift, hold down Shift this to uh, smooth that out. Or switch into brushes like Damien Standard and stuff like that to kind of dig lines in and mix and match these brushes to get all sorts of cool stuff going on with your organic sculpts. Now if I switch back to the standard brush, and if you haven't signed a hotkey yet, you can go to BST. Let's start messing with some of these strokes. So with the standard brush selected, it just behaves like this. You have a fall off that we've already talked about and the focal shift and all that good stuff and Z intensity. If you change your strokes, however, right now it's at the dot stroke. Now dot stroke is very similar to freehand. So here's freehand and it's, it's a little bit of a smoother stroke. Dot stroke is also fairly smooth. However, if you go into the stroke options and you go to lazy mouse here, this is where you can kind of space out your stroke. So you can actually make it a little bit more dot like. So for example, I'm going to take this stroke menu here. And I'm going to dock it right over here. Again, you can double click these dividers to open those up and then just grab that white dot to drag the menu over here. Then you see our lazy mouse by default is on with the standard brush. If I tap L, that toggles Lazy Mouse off, and now that's the stroke we're going to get. If we tap L again, you're going to see we have a couple options. These are Lazy Mouse options. They get grayed out when Lazy Mouse is off. But you're going to see the most obvious one down here is going to be the Lazy Radius. Right now it's set to 1, and it's barely noticeable, but if you look really closely at my cursor, there's a little rubber band hanging out behind it. That's very subtly smoothing my stroke as I use the standard brush. If I crank that up to, say, 67, now you're going to see that rubber band goes way behind it. So you can kind of dial this in. You can say maybe put it on 18, and you can get very, very smooth strokes. Great for decoration. You can, again, hold down Alt or let go of Alt and that'll really nicely smooth your stroke out. You're also going to see a lazy step. So if you move this way up, you're going to see that's going to space your strokes out. So at 2.25, the strokes are far apart. And then if you make it a very small number, now the strokes are very overlapping each other. And now you're actually getting a more intense version of your standard brush because your dot stroke is kind of layered on top of itself. Now, if you kind of want to mix this with alpha functionality, what you can do is you can take your alpha here. And again, let's grab the star. And by default, if we just drag this out, you're going to see it's basically taking that star alpha and just dragging it through our mesh. If you go over here to your lazy step and again, push that up to like 2, 2.5, you're going to see now it's going to put a star every so often. If you make our brush big, that's going to put a bigger star on our object. You're going to see the stars starting to fade off at the edges. That's again that focal shift coming into play. You see when I put my brush right over the star, right in the middle where the brush is, it's nice and defined. And then as it fades out towards the end of the brush radius, it kind of softens out. So we're going to take that focal shift and turn it down to negative 100. And now when we do that, if I go ahead and stamp nice sharp stars all over my object. Now, I usually wouldn't use a brush that big. I'd make it this small and then I can just go through and stamp them out. Or I'll go back here to my lazy step and make that a little bit smaller. So now I can kind of go through and just kind of brush stars over this guy as I see fit. Again, you can also hold down Alt and you can punch those stars in if you want to. You can use them in conjunction with masking. You can go masking, pin, freehand, hold to grab that brush alpha, turn on lazy mouse. And again, you can just go through here, change that lazy step. So now you can even mask through here and then control tap to invert. And then you can go through here to your deformation menu. You can inflate, you can deflate, or you can even go in here with your standard brush or your go grab a clay brush and then you can just sculpt through or hold down Alt and sculpt in on an individual masked basis. Or you can control drag and we'll go ahead and undo all that. But control drag to clear your mask there. Going back to our standard brush here, if we change that from a dot stroke to, we've already talked about freehand and drag dot, I'm sorry, freehand and dot stroke. If we go to drag rect, with an alpha chosen, now we're going to drag rect that brush alpha. And again, if our focal shift is at a, you know around zero, it's going to kind of soften those edges. Make sure your focal shift's at negative 100. You'll get a nice drag rect stroke. And then if you want to make them all the same, drag dot. Make your brush size as big as you want. And then you can go through. And for drag dot, I like to not have lazy mouse turned on because it kind of gives me a stutter effect. So I'm going to tap L to turn my lazy mouse off. Or you can just hit that button. And now you can go through here and very quickly kind of punch in 
these holes. Now, if you want to punch them in more intensely, you can go in here to your Z intensity and crank that up. And now you're getting a very intense punch or change your Z intensity down and then you're getting a lesser effect. Let's go ahead and undo that. Last couple are color spray and spray. Uh, color spray we'll get to when you get to poly painting, but first now we can spray and you can actually spray these star alphas on your object. Kind of gives you a nice noise kind of look. So you can do alt and then let go of alt and you can kind of get a noisy look like that. Of course, feel free to use any of these alphas in here. They'll give you a different effect. So if we spray, uh, for instance, let's go ahead and hit um, in our geometry. We can hit divide to get a little bit more resolution. Hit divide a couple times. And now if we change our Z intensity down and then hold down alt, as we're using the spray stroke with this alpha, we're getting kind of a elephant skin type look. So you can use this or you can change this to maybe these dots and you can hold down alt and you can kind of spray in pore detail like this. I'll hold down Alt, and that'll kind of put pore detail like that. So spray in conjunction with different alphas will give you a different effect. We'll go and turn that off, turn that back to freehand, and now we're back to our regular standard brush. Of course, it looks a little bit weird because our focal shift has turned to negative 100. So we'll turn that back to zero. And it, here's the other thing too. If you take a slider and you can slide it to a number, you can also just like tap on the slider and then type a number and then hit enter, and that'll go to zero. And then we can change our Z intensity back up, and then we're back where we started. Or, like we did before, you can go to brush and then reset all brushes at the very bottom, right here. Now when you're changing your stroke options and your alpha options over here, remember, I'm going to go ahead and close these out, take your stroke menu over here, I'm going to drag it, and underneath modifiers, there's a lot of really cool things you can play with here. So for example, if I've got my standard brush here, and we open up Lazy Mouse. By default, your Lazy Mouse is going to be on. You can tap L to toggle that on and off. The Lazy Radius is going to be set to 1. You can crank that up. You'll get that long stroke behind it. However, if we change an alpha in here, we go to alpha 06 and we drag this out, you're going to see essentially it's dragging that alpha. If we change this Lazy Step to say 2.25, it's going to drag these out. Let's go ahead and crank our Z intensity up. So we can go through here. And that's going to set your lazy step. Of course, the closer that lazy step is, the more they're going to be close together. If you crank that lazy step up, they're going to be spread farther apart. So if we make our lazy step down again, let's put that dip back down to like 0.25. And if you hold down shift, you'll be able to snap your brush to a straight line. We'll get more into this when we get into the chisel brush in later units. However, there's also a backtrack option. You can turn this on. You can backtrack a plane. You can backtrack a line. So if you do a line on here, it'll snap to a line, and then it'll go ahead. And so we'll click once, drag out, and then it'll just snap to a straight line here. Now, it's not snapping to the track. It'll initially snap it to the line, and then you can go wherever you want. If you want it to snap to that track, turn that on. And now when you drag out a line and you go back and forth, no matter where my brush goes, it'll snap to that track. Now, later on, when we go to Transpose Basics, I'll give you another option for snapping to straight lines, but this one's a pretty easy one to do. Also, you can do a spline, you can make a, or a path. You can drag a path out here, and then you can just go back and forth over that path, or drag a path out, hold down Alt, and you can just drag back and forth over that path there. Let's go ahead and turn backtrack off. And there's also a roll option up here. If I hit the comma key and we go into brushes, and we scroll over here to the right, where we have stitches, double click that, Let's go ahead and grab the stitch one. So we'll just double click that. That'll load up stitch one. And you're going to see we have roll turned on and we have a brush alpha loaded. So essentially, if I drag this out on my mesh, essentially it's rolling out on that alpha. If we want more resolution, just hit control D. That's going to go to geometry, subdivide, or you can go down here to DynaMesh and you can raise that resolution up so that when you DynaMesh, you'll get more geometry. So whichever one you want to do, let's go ahead and just raise our resolution and then control drag to read DynaMesh. So now when we drag over this, we'll get a much higher resolution stitch. And just like any other brush, if you hold down Alt, it'll punch in that alpha. Now if we turn Roll off, what it's going to do is take that alpha and then use that lazy step to kind of determine how the step these are. So if we crank this lazy step up to like 1.3, you can kind of see that's working. You can go up here to your Z intensity and increase that a bit. But if you want to roll through this um, repeating alpha here, just turn roll on and now uh, it'll roll through. Now, of course, you're going to want to change your lazy step back to, I guess, 0.25 was the default. And now it'll roll through that alpha. Now, it is going to allow us to go from thin and light to heavy to thin and then smaller. If you want to control that, and we'll touch on this later as well, you can grab your brush menu. Let's go ahead and dock it down here. You can go to tablet and pressure. You can turn off global settings, go into size, 
and Z intensity. So size, you can make flat. Z intensity, you can make flat. And now your brush is going to behave like a mouse. Alternatively, you can use global settings turned on. And then under preferences, tablet, you can turn off use tablet. And now your pressure should be pretty consistent. It's going to treat it like you're using a mouse instead of a pressure sensitive tablet. Of course, you're going to want to make sure you go back in here and you can assign a hotkey to this if you'd like. You can turn use tablet back on or again, you can change your pressure in that area there. And since we're talking about brush options, let's talk about a few more. Let's go into a sphere, uh, edit, make poly mesh 3D. We'll subdivide this up. And if you go to BH, there's a brush hatch and brush hatch backtrack. Basically hatch backtrack is basically the hatch brush with stroke, lazy mouse, backtrack turned on. So if you remember backtrack, you can drag out a, a curve. And in this case, uh, it's just going to drag in a straight line and then won't let you pass that line. So let's back up a little bit. What is the hatch brush? We have the hatch brush selected. And I'm going to go back here to stroke and we'll turn off backtrack. So basically, with hatch brush, if you go in one direction and then you stop and you come back, it's not going to do anything. And I'm not lifting my hand off of the tablet. It's just happening automatically. So basically, you can go out in one direction. And then as you're kind of, if I scribble in a Z pattern, it's not going to go in a Z. It's just going to be a bunch of strokes going in the same direction. And where that is, is underneath the stroke menu, you have modifiers and you have no back and forth. So if I turn that off and I go back and forth, it's going to have a Z build up or it'll just continue to build up over time. Uh, if I turn on no back and forth, I'm going to go this way. And then as I'm kind of scribbling across, it's only going to go in one direction. If we hit BH, hatch backtrack, it's just going to kind of stop after a certain distance. Now you can go into lazy mouse backtrack. You can put that on like a line or a path. Um, it's kind of up to you. Um, that's that's kind of interesting, but um, you can figure out different ways uh, to use this. But basically, no back and forth is the functionality that we're talking about with the hatch brushes. Infinite depth kind of infinite depth is kind of interesting. If you go in here to brush depth and ZBrush 2020 and beyond, there's a infinite depth option. So let's look at something a little bit easier. Let's go. Um, at, well, I mean, I guess we could do it on here, but we'll go ahead and uh, we'll switch tools. We'll go to a cube 3D. Take Control N to clear a canvas. Grab that out. Go into Edit Mode. And again, we'll go ahead and subdivide this up. And if I hit, uh, if I go into my move brush, BMV, and we use the move brush, oops, let's hit make poly mesh 3D. You're going to see when I pull out from the front here, hold down shift and snap to the front, it's going to pull out, but it's only going to go back the depth of my brush stroke here. So if I make my brush stroke larger and pull out, it's going to go back about, you know, the depth of the brush stroke. However, if I go over here to infinite depth, and we turn on our floor so we can see what direction we're in. Uh, Z is the blue line forward. So if I do infinite depth in Z and do that, and I go to the side, it's going to go all the way back through the object. If I turn that off and do that, again, it's only going to go back as far as the brush stroke. Of course, you can do this across X symmetry. So you have an X symmetry on, and we have Z depth, infinite depth turned on. You don't even have to be snapped to the front. It's a little bit easier to pull out. Uh, a little bit more of a controlled along that uh, surface, but you can be in any direction. Then you can go through here, and you can use any brush, and you can pull all the way straight through that depth. And of course, you don't have to do just Z depth. You can do Y depth if you want to. So if we do Y depth, that's going to be from the top down. So if I pull from the top down here, in and out, you'll see it goes straight through the object. If we go over here to geometry, and uh, actually, if you if you had made polymesh 3D and subdivided, you would have to go over here and go to Geometry, Delete Lower. But since I didn't, uh, there is no subdivision. So if you need to, just go to Geometry, Delete Lower. And then we can go in here to BI, Brush Insert, Industrial Parts. And the bolt head is fine. So I'm just going to drag out a bolt head. Hold down Control as after I drag out. So if you hold down, um, you start dragging out and then hold down Control, it'll snap to your brush size. So you can put a bunch of bolts on here. Now we're across X Symmetry. So if I control drag, and if you turn on polyframe here, you can hold down control shift, isolate this original poly group here, and then do a subtool split hidden. And now your bolts are going to be on their own uh, subtool here. So one thing you can do is if you go into the move brush and you go in here to auto masking and you say auto mask by topological, if you make your brush size one, you can go through here and you can move an entire object around. So you can very quickly uh, move these into very different patterns. And because we have X symmetry turned on, um, and that's underneath transform, activate symmetry in the X, you can see we can move uh, those objects. However, if you hit W and then uh, control 
or I'm sorry, hold down Alt and just tap the face of one of those bolts. And then hold down Control and drag out a copy. And if that doesn't work, just go up here to Geometry, Modify Topology, Mirror and Weld. And now hold down Control and drag out a copy. Now you can see we have bolts in front of one another. So now if I go in there and do my topological trick, I can move this one because it's not vert welded. And that's again, move topological brush size down to one. Um, I can move this one around, but it's not going to move all the way through because this isn't welded to that. However, if I make my brush size uh, big enough to encompass, and let's go also change that focal shift down to negative 100 so we get a nice solid line around here. If we make the brush size big enough to encompass that, and then we look at our floor here, and we see that we're in the X axis when we're looking at it from this way. We can turn off topological. We can go back into brush depth, turn on infinite depth in the X. And now when I move this one, it's going to move all the way back through all the verts within that brush. So now we can go through here and rearrange these very, very quickly. And of course, you're going to want to make sure you grab the middle or just make your brush stroke big enough, but then it's going to encompass more of these. So you just want to make it just big enough to encompass that initial brush here. And just one more quick example, if we go in here to tool and double click the dog Z tool and then hit the comma key to go ahead and get rid of the light box here. Uh, if we have X symmetry turned on just by tapping X, you can go in here and you can move these legs. Oops, turn our focal shift back to zero here. You can move these legs like this because you have X symmetry on, but you can't move and turn infinite depth off but you can't move so here symmetry is on so you can move them like so but you can't go all the way back in z unless you do infinite depth in z and it's not just moving you can go through here and you can use the inflate brush uh, it's not global so with the inf with the move brush it's turned on you can turn it off and on but then when we go to the inflate brush it's not on so we go go ahead and tap that on in the z direction and now when we inflate it'll inflate all the way back through